Why are preamps so expensive? This question comes from Brian in Singapore, and Brian writes to me, he says, hey Paul, why are good preamps so expensive? I have a Bryston BP25 preamp and a positive review described it as close to being a straight wire with gain. That's a very nice compliment. If that's what a good analog uh, preamp should be, wouldn't it be better just to have a straight wire, you know, uh, a passive input switcher and a potentiometer? You could make that for a hundred bucks and it might even be as good or better. So why all the money? Okay, years ago, we did exactly that. When Stan and I first started PS Audio, that's all we used was just a pot. I mean, literally a potentiometer. We would, <coughs> we didn't even have an input selector. We just had, a, a, you know, some cables hooked up to a pot and you hook it up to the output of our phono preamplifier. We had enough gain in our phono preamplifier to where as you cranked it all the way up, connected on the other side through another set of cables, straight into a power amp, that was plenty to drive the entire system. And it was extremely clean. Later, we elevated that up to a box. <laughs> we put the thing in a box. And when we started building preamps, the first one was called the Linear Control Center, we wanted to include that pots in a box, that, that straight wire feature where you just had a pot, so we had a switch on the front. You could have the gain stage that was built into the linear control center preamp and a pot and a switch, or you could just have the input switch, the pot, and it went straight out. And you could have your choice, put it on a switch. And some people preferred one way, some people preferred the other way. Over time, what we started noticing was that in many systems, when you went straight with that pot and the input switch, it was kind of wimpy in the bottom end. There wasn't a lot of heft. There wasn't a lot of pacing and rhythm. It was clean as all get out, but it wasn't, there wasn't a lot of um, impact. It was kind of wimpy. And when we had the line stage in, then that wimp factor went away and it was gnarly. And that thing had kick-ass bass, it slammed pace the whole bit, but it wasn't quite as clean. So picture, picture poison, right? So the, the problem is that the impedance, the, the changing in, of resistance in a pot has a whole bunch of problems, all right? So if you imagine the, the interface between um, a source and your power amplifier, so a source, a DAC or a phono stage, or, uh, w whatever it, it could be, has very low output impedance, and that is what you need to effectively drive a cable into the high input impedance of the power amplifier. As soon as you insert a variable impedance pot, say a 10K or a 20K pot, well, one of the things you've done is that you've effectively uh, changed the output impedance of your source to a very high level. It's the level of the pot. And depending on where you have the pot, that's a varying source impedance. So it could, if you had your pot turned all the way up, then what you've done is you've connected the low output impo uh, impedance of the source to the high input impedance of the amplifier, which is what we want. But as you turn the knob down, the pot down, you're adding resistance, and now the source impedance of the uh, output impedance goes up, 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 up. And as it does that, it gets wimpier and wimpier and wimpier sounding. So the ideal is to have that happen, but then put a buffer at the output of it. And that buffer takes whatever varying input impedance from the pot and gives you a low output impedance once again. So you have this steady low output impedance and that's what a preamp does. Whether it has gain or it doesn't have gain, you need that output buffer. But then how do you get that cleanliness, that 
perfection of the straight wire when you do all of that, see? So we've got all these compromise balls juggling around. Well, that's how come it gets expensive. Because in order to make that sound as clean, you have to come up with all kinds of tricky ways of, of making a pot, of using the world's best pots, of uh, coming up with electronic uh, attenuators, and then you've got remote controls, and then you have to have a big power supply. It's really hard to make invisible sounding buffers to make invisible sounding potentiometers. I mean, I could go on for hours of what's involved in doing that. But that's the general situation of a preamp, and that's, that's the issues that you, as designers, we go through and why we spend a lot of money. Uh, in the BHK, I mean, it's an exp that's a $6,000 preamp. Why? Well, there's a lot of stuff in it. Huge power supplies, vacuum tubes, MOSFET buffers, uh, clever biasing schemes, a whole way of changing the gain on the vacuum tube as opposed to having a potentiometer because we know potentiometers have a sound to them. and We don't want that sound, right? So we take the potentiometer out, but we still have to change the volume. How do we do that? Change the gain of the tube. Well, how do you do that? Well, that's on and on and on. Here, I'm going to get, get riled up. But that, that's how come. So welcome, welcome to my world. <laughs> All right. Take it easy. Thanks for the question. I'll talk to you later. Bye.